My friend, what are you going to do next session? Where is your game even going? Do you have a plan? Welcome, scholars, storytellers, and fellow babysitter DMs. This is the Level Up Corner, led by yours truly, Wizzo, as we delve into all the tips and tricks about Dungeons and Dragons. Today's topic is how to make a plot. Now, this is something that every dungeon master needs to go through. You need to create a plot in order for your players to play the game. They have to be working towards something, but how would you do so? Would you start from the beginning? Well, this is the most logical way to go about it. At least, one would think at first. But let's look at the two possibilities that come about when you start the plot from the beginning. You can start creating it and write all the way to the end or halfway through. Either way, it makes it so that there is a set, rigorous path that the players need to take which encourages railroading, and uh, you're meant to make a narrative, a story with the player, so that's not a good idea. But the other thing that can happen when you start a plot is that you are working with the players. You are making something come about with teamwork, and you have no idea where that's going at all. You have no idea what's going to happen, and ugh, starting from the beginning is not actually how you make a plot. How you make a plot, or at least how you start it, is always at the end. Now it seems kind of strange, but hear me out. If you have an idea that the players are going to eventually, at the end of the campaign, confront the lord of the town who has been giving them all these quests in order to stop his nefarious deeds of creating a cult of undead and worshippers that has been going on throughout the entire game, you need to have that thought out before the game even starts. And if you have that thought out, you can sprinkle in little pieces of it here and there. You can have the beginning quest involve a missing person. You can have the next quest involve a character who is worried about potential religious iconography that pertains to abyssal creatures or creatures from the far realm. You could make little pieces sprinkled in here and there throughout the entire campaign so that by the end, when the players get to the end of the campaign, they can say, you're a genius the entire time you had an idea of what was happening. And you could say, yes, I knew kind of where you were going. Or you could just say yes and let them think that you're greater than you actually are. Because you didn't plan everything out. You just had the end piece. And that is able to allow you to have prophecies, foretellings, or even little sprinkled bits of something greater. Since you have it figured out. But how do you make up that end point of the plot? How do you figure out where the players are going? Well, there's a saying. There's nothing new under the sun. And this applies to DMs and literally everyone else. You think the concept of the BBEG was made first by Tolkien with Sauron and the One Ring? No, before then there were other mythologies, other big bad guys. And before then there were other big bad evil guys and yada yada. There is nothing new under the sun. And they uh, worked off of the great creative works of previous giants. Things that they enjoyed and you can look to other things that you enjoy for inspiration as well. Look to movies, books, stories you enjoyed. Just about anything can be used to give you something. And don't be afraid to just steal it. Because, as DMs, that is something we love to do. Now that you have an idea of where you're starting, which is ironically at the end, you do need to jump back to that starting point for your players. Figure out where they are in the town, how you're going to make it tie into the entirety of the campaign, since you have the endpoint mapped out, and what theme you're going for. If you, for example, had that endpoint, the plot of eventually they need to go and overthrow the Lord who is in charge of a cult, well, you're going to have probably a more dank and dour setting. You might have it be set up as a happy place, but there are little sprinkles, once again, of torment and deceit, where everything becomes happy at first, but there's something unnerving about it in the beginning. Everyone's at a fair in the first session, 
But there's sadness in their eyes. Why? Well, the players need to find out. If you want it to be a, a more dark and dour setting, because people are literally being taken for a cult, possibly sacrificed, then you could have it as a dismal area. Once you set that setting in the first session, you make it so that in the dark and dismal area, everything is encroaching upon them. The barrels seem closer than they need to be. Fog or mist rolls in. The buildings are lower than what should be. You give descriptions of narrowing and tightening aspects of what is happening. If you're having a more happy and whimsical campaign, then you could start out with colors, how everything is bright and happy, and every once in a while when they talk to other NPCs, their expressions don't match the color. The NPCs have a bit of, ha, I'm, ha I'm happy, I'm happy, uh, worriedness in their face. Something's wrong. Something is uncanny. And that can lead them towards the cult or lead them towards a mystery that something is amiss, at the very least. And this first setting is meant to tie in to the very end. You want them to have a loose connection based upon the environment and setting that you want to give your players. But what about the rest of the plot? After all, you've got your end and your beginning. What about the middle, the fuzzy area that we haven't gone over? Well, when you plan a plot, the beauty of it is that you are creating a story with your players. So now that you have your end point fixed and your beginning, well, made, you're able to sprinkle in little pieces of what could be. You might have some interesting ideas. For example, a troll lieutenant is in charge of the cult. All right, that's all you need to know. Just put that in the spot at maybe level five. They'll deal with that. Okay. Uh, there is a uh, goblin who is actually trying to save people, like um, a Robin Hood, if you will. Very strange, not typical, but a cool idea. You want to come up with these cool ideas and put them in different areas in which the players could choose to go. You don't need to fully flesh out these ideas. You want to make a mishmash, a scatter, if you will. Just take a bunch of ideas and throw it at a board, because your players may not choose to go these routes, and if they don't, that's okay. That you don't need to plan everything. In fact, a good plot should look more like an hourglass or a semicircle. You have a start, an end, there's this little arc of things that are supposed to happen, and in that arc there's a bunch of little splots, as you don't actually have a coherent line for them to go through. It could also look like an hourglass where you start at the top and at the very bottom there's an option and you could go to make a climax in the center. There's a center point where it has to be and then it goes all the way towards the end. There are a few different ways that you can do this but the whole idea is that you want to make the plot flexible and versatile. In order to do this you need to never plan more than two to three sessions ahead. The problem, if you plan more than two to three sessions ahead, is that you would, well, either A, burn out like I tend to do, or B, you get hyper-focused on what is to come. You don't have the enjoyment in the moment that you need as a DM for your players because you're fixated on that cool goblin Robin Hood creature that they're going to encounter in three sessions and now they're just uh, whatever they're, they're they're filler time for six hours and that's horrible you don't ever want to be in filler time for six hours Ech. and if you plan more than three sessions ahead you're also starting to railroad it or if you are not railroading the players creating a very dangerous precedent to where your players could decide you know instead of following this plot we're going to go to another town and try to figure something else out. And then, well, your whole plans are thrown awry. So, <laughs> you don't really want to plan more than two to three sessions ahead. Now, the last aspect in creating a plot is to make sure that the players have a central piece in it. And this is difficult for many DMs out there. Players are agents of chaos. You don't know what they'll do. They don't know what they'll do. In fact, they probably don't even know what they're doing while they're doing it. But the players still need to be at the center point of your plot. In order to do so, you need to create a story with them. This means that things can change. 
that your plot can be influenced by the players. They aren't just going to go through this linear line to the bad, big bad evil guy and kill them or whatever your endpoint is. They can change everything. They can change the end. I know, crazy. We started with the end and we're supposed to know what will happen, but the players will be able to have an influence. Instead of the evil lord having a cult, maybe the players could really get close to that evil lord. Maybe they could win through friendship and diplomacy. I know, cliche, the power of friendship, but they could. There are some parties that go with the power of friendship. They could change it to where the lord himself actually views the players as allies, and uh, the players have given him the change of heart to where he really sees that leading a cult is, shocker, bad. So he points them in the direction of those who gave him this idea. And you have now a new narrative, because the players have changed what is happening. The end point and the end idea was still there, but the players had such a huge impact. Because your job with a plot is not to necessarily create a story by itself. As you can tell, my friends, making a plot is complex. It's not something that's straightforward, where you can say you go from a starting point to an ending point, or even from an ending point back to the beginning. They are intrinsically linked, but they can be changed and influenced by your players. However, don't leave it just to me to tell you how to make a plot. I would love to hear from you all how you make your plots in D&D. Where do you diverge in this theory? What do you work with that is the same? And most importantly, how does that work out? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe and ding that notification bell so that you can stay informed on more of these DM tips and tricks and so that we can reach more people. And lastly, don't forget that your players love and appreciate you. Keep rolling, my friends. Keep rolling.